we're about to fly on an Airbus A380, the biggest commercial plane in the world. It's so big that most airports can't accommodate the size of it. That's actually why you can't see it in the shot right now because the gate itself is so big that it's blocking the view of the plane. People stop and stare when the plane is taking off because you're just wondering, how does this thing get in the air and stay there? It really is a showstopper of a plane. The size alone makes it special and just the engineering done to achieve such a feat. The Airbus A380 was designed for long haul flights. It has four engines, is a full length double decker that provides two levels of passenger seating, which can carry over 800 people. Its tail is as high as a six story building. Its wingspan is just over 261 feet, which is longer than the plane itself. It has a range of 8,000 nautical miles and a takeoff weight of over 1 million pounds. Technically, uh, it, was, uh, it was a sort of adventure uh, having this uh, full-length uh, double-deck aircraft uh, was, was never done before. And from the early discussions to the, the freeze of the architecture of the aircraft, yes, it took us about, about 10 years. When it debuted, the A380 overtook the long-reigning Boeing 747 as the biggest wide-body airliner. But demand for such big four-engine planes didn't last long. The executives at Airbus may have watched Field of Dreams one time too many because I think they had a, an if you build it, they will come moment with the A380. In 2019, one A380 was priced at $445 million. Airbus sold 251 planes to 14 airlines, but Emirates was by far its biggest customer. We are a major airline when it comes to uh, the hub and spoke. So it played a major role in carrying as much pa passengers via Dubai into the rest of our network. So the A380 has been quite crucial. Orders peaked in the early 2010s, then started to decline. During the COVID-19 pandemic, it was one of the most heavily impacted fleets due to its sheer size and cost to operate, along with the near halt to international long haul travel. I believe at one point, about 90% of the A380 fleet was grounded. Airbus manufactured the plane for 14 years until it ended production in 2021. Many thought it was the end for the super jumbos, but the A380 has been making a comeback with several airlines pulling planes out of retirement. CNBC explores how the A380 became the biggest passenger plane in the world and what the future looks like for the massive jet. The idea for a double-decker passenger plane wasn't a new idea when the A380 was being developed. In fact, one of Boeing's original concepts for the 747 in the 1960s was a full double-decker. But as we know, the 747 ended up with its iconic hump in only a small upper deck section. Before Airbus designed the A380, it actually had talks with Boeing and the two of them began working jointly on what they called an ultra-high capacity aircraft an airplane that would be larger than the Boeing 747 and designed to fly long distances uh, as the 747 did. That cooperation dissolved when Boeing concluded that there just wasn't demand for this large of an airplane. Airbus proceeded with the venture on its own. It launched the A380 program in 2000 and entered commercial service in 2007. We had uh, challenges everywhere, even in terms of uh, industrialization, of course, uh, jigs and tools, uh, everything is huge for the 380. And so it was a challenge to design this tool and, and manufacture the plane. Designing a new plane is a huge undertaking and a costly one. It's estimated that Airbus has invested perhaps $25 billion, maybe more, maybe a little less on the A380, and they did not come close to earning that money back. The company ran into lots of issues and delays, causing the stock price to drop nearly 26% at one point. But it needed a plane that could ferry lots of passengers like the Boeing 747, which could hold over 400 people. Our product line was kind of uh, limited in terms of aircraft capacity. Therefore, competing with uh, Boeing uh, in this very uh, large uh, aircraft segment was, was a kind of was a matter of credibility. Airbus also estimated strong demand for the large aircraft market. In the 90s, we were anticipating a very significant growth in, in, in air transport and therefore um, connecting mega cities with, uh, with a very large plane uh, that would allow to carry a, a big number of passengers uh, was making a lot of sense. The time it takes for a commercial airplane to be designed and then manufactured can take years, leaving Boeing and Airbus to base designs on market trends. 
If you looked at the way Boeing was looking at the world, there were hub and spoke systems that you know, formed the foundation of a lot of air travel networks today. But Boeing's bet was that these networks would continue to become more scattered and there will be more point-to-point -point routes and a move away from hub and spoke. In the hub and spoke model, passengers are funneled through large hubs to connect onto other destinations. The point-to-point -point model moves passengers between destinations directly without routing them through a central hub. That led to their product decisions on wide-body jets like the 777 that came out in the mid-1990s and then the 787 in the uh, late 2000s. And that serves those types of networks. Twin-engine aircraft like the Boeing 787 and Airbus's A350 carry fewer passengers than a 747 or A380, but can now travel almost just as far. Airbus, on the other hand, was betting on a world where we would basically see more airports like London Heathrow that are really slot constrained, and that would force airlines to have to upgauge to serve the same number of passengers but with less frequent flights. We're about to board this A380 and look at the amount of people who are getting ready to board here. The plane that we're flying on is Emirates and it seats over 500 people. So the A380 is so big, it has three different jetways to get everyone on board. It's actually a full double decker with the bottom decker of this plane actually all economy, which is where we're sitting. It's quieter, it, it feels bigger, you know, it's, it just, you know that it's a big mammoth flying. It's, it's a beautiful aircraft. It has two sets of stairs, one in the front and one in the back, and 220 windows throughout the aircraft. The A380's first commercial flight was in 2007, operated by Singapore Airlines. The A380 is definitely a passenger-friendly plane, but it's definitely also not for every airline and not for every route that an airline may operate. Emirates is the largest customer and operator of the Airbus A380. Out of the 251 planes ordered, Emirates took delivery of almost half of them. The A380 is a beautiful product. We've trusted the brand, we've trusted the aircraft itself. If you look in the cabin, it kind of looks like any other wide body, but the fact that there's an entire other level above us makes the A380 so massive. The double-decker plane has allowed airlines like Emirates and Etihad to offer high-end amenities in flight, like full suites with lie-flat beds, lounges, and even in-flight showers. Airlines have made their A380s very pleasant for passengers, even in economy. It's quiet, which is important. There are high ceilings, there's plenty of uh, overhead stowage, space for carry-on bags. And when you fly on an Emirates A380, you can have your Polaroid taken. While its big size does allow for more onboard amenities and seats, it was a challenge for some airports. So when the A380 came out, a lot of airports were scrambling to figure out how to fit it. And you know, some large hubs had to modify their gates to be A380 ready. The amount of infrastructure work that airports have had to make to accommodate the A380 is quite substantial. There are really only a handful of airports that are certified to handle the A380 on an everyday basis. The A380 doesn't take up any more runway to take off or land than, say, a 747. But they did have to make sure that they had enough space between taxiways and runways because the A380's wingspan is simply so large and thus so wide. The size and economics did limit the marketing power of the plane. While many of the U.S. airlines did have 747s, not a single one bought an A380. So the U.S. airlines certainly gave the A380 consideration, but they concluded that the 380 just wasn't right for them. For airlines with ultra-long-haul flights like Dubai to Auckland, the A380 is a good fit. We need to acknowledge that this aircraft is there to serve a sort of niche market, legs between mega cities, uh, highly congested airports. With other carriers not seeing the importance of that A380, that's absolutely uh, depending on their network. But for us, we believed in the A380 and we still do. What we've generally heard from airlines is that when you can fill an A380, the unit costs, as in the costs per seat, are, are very attractive. But of course, you know, consistently filling 550 seats is far more difficult than consistently filling a 350 seat wide body. 
In the early 2000s, when the A380 was being developed, orders were already declining for its main competitor, the Boeing 747. The economics of four-engine aircraft in general are declining. You can fly a 777 or 787 or A350 over you know, large bodies of water because those engines have become so reliable. And in many cases, airlines don't want to have to face the cost of overhauling four engines one day if they can get the same capability with two engines. Comparing the A380 with a newer technology would be unfair. The better option would always be that every aircraft, every new aircraft that comes out right now is a bit, is definitely more technologically advanced than the previous versions. Uh, same thing goes with the engines. Airbus made the decision to stop production in 2019, and the last plane rolled off the production line in 2021. Little by little, the, the order went down, and then, and then we came to the conclusion that uh, there was no, no case to continue producing this plane. The economic lifespan of a wide-body passenger jet is about 24 years, and so far the average retirement age of an A380 is 11 and a half years. When the pandemic hit, the A380's future looked uncertain. The pandemic forced all airlines to re-examine everything about their businesses, including their fleets and route networks. And some airlines concluded if they wanted to continue to operate the 380, they would need to make substantial investments to their cabins, which they weren't sure they would be able to pay off and more. You know, that's why some carriers opted not to bring their fleets back. Despite all the challenges, there's still a long future for the A380. That aircraft has probably a little longer future than even we thought, surely, some time ago. Passengers love it, the crews love it, and we will now very soon start to also upgrade the product in the 380 in business class, which we wouldn't do if we expect the airplane to be grounded soon. Post-pandemic travel returned at a rapid pace. That, along with delivery delays, have many airlines turning back to their A380 fleet when they thought they were previously retired. We have our retrofit program that we're currently on of around $2 billion that we are spending on retrofitting our 120 aircrafts. 67 of them will be the A380s. Congested airports and ultra-long-haul travel aren't going away either. Many of them selected this, this plane because it's a very efficient plane to carry a big number of passengers between mega cities, and it's still very efficient in terms of uh, fuel burn per seat. And the plane is still popular among enthusiasts. The A380 has been a crowd puller, and it still is. While it was no longer viable to keep producing the plane, Airbus still sees the A380 as a success and will continue to support the aircraft for years to come. Many things that we learned from the 380 were carried over to uh, the, the 350, and many innovations that were decided uh, at the time of the 380 uh, now are part of the, the 350 uh, DNA and foundations. Airbus expects the A380 to be flying for the next two decades and is currently still being operated by 10 airlines, including Emirates, Lufthansa, Etihad, and British Airways. A majority of Boeing 747s are now cargo planes, but that's not an option with the A380. There were cargo versions proposed and both Federal Express, FedEx, uh, and UPS had expressed interest the conclusion was that the added strengthening that would be required to the uh, aircraft floors would be way too much and reduce the uh, viability of the aircraft. So we just landed and the flight was super smooth. Takeoff, landing, cruising, not too many bumps. Boarding and deboarding did take a long time, but um, besides that, everything went well. There are certainly people that think Airbus was chasing the largest aircraft and others will say that it may have come too early. We could maybe be facing the type of constrained airport environment that they hypothesized where an A380 could fit really well. It's impressive engineering. A lot of credit deserves to be given to the designers and engineers and others at Airbus that helped bring this airplane to life. It's unfortunate it just wasn't more of a commercial success.